in the light of recent bank collapses, the crypto industry is left with, well, not much hope. The only hope in the crypto industry is that innovation, which is so common in blockchain, will create a new path. And that seems to be the hope, and I guess, if you will, the faith that many crypto supporters, decentralized crypto supporters, march forward with. Today, I want to tell you there is hope out there in the banking industry for platforms that will allow from crypto to fiat gateways. A new bank, we're going to talk about that today, that's being introduced in Switzerland that will help crypto and those who support crypto in DeFi IoT. All right, all right. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. I hope it's a better day for you. I'm doing this video right after the recent, most recent school shooting. I have a video where I talked about that too. If you want to, please make sure your subscription is up to date. I talk about it. I get, I get some personal experiences on what I've lived in outside of the U.S. and some things we need to be concerned about, what's being promoted right now by the government. Everything right now is anti-freedom. And this recent run on the banks... Silvergate, etc., has been a run to basically bring down the exchange platforms or systems between cryptocurrencies and the normal banking institution, the financial institution that exists and has existed for some time. Now, there's been a run on the, from, the, from, the, from the government, especially the U.S. government right now, and it's going to go forward on a global aspect. It, things are being reviewed now. We're in countries like the, the U.K., in, in the Europe, uh, the European Union, and so forth. The rules now are being revamped on the light of the FTX issue, right? And that's a whole other thing you can go back into and unwrap that, whether that whole FTX collapse was something strategically planned and implemented um, by the U.S. government and or in collaboration with the World Economic Forum. I won't go into that today. Conspiracy theories aside, there is some evidence that points that direction. But what I want to focus on right now is a hope now. You know, it was only going to be the U.S. is going to push this blockchain technology, which Web 3.0, outside. They're going to try to adopt it where they can in the government where they can control it, where it's centralized it. But to allow the free market to have that, just like with 5G. 5G is not met, meant for you and I to use. It's meant for big business and the governments to be able to use and abuse. Because with 5G, if you notice the towers, drive by your 5G towers, they're not as high as 4G towers were, right? Or even 3G, or even going back further. They were high, they had to get more distance. Now they're lower. And if you look, they'll even... Put them, they decorate them like his trees so they're they're less obvious because they want them right in the middle of the cities. They want it close to the cities. And why? So that 5G can penetrate right through your households and read all of the smart electronics that we have in our homes. Well, no wonder why the government wants to go everything electrical too, right? Maybe? Well, there may be no coincidence there, I'm sure. So, aside from this, we have this, where do we go now? Binance gets nailed, and now in some lawsuits with 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 the over commodities trading, illegal tr commodities trading in the U.S., and saying that they're supporting Americans using VPNs, and so they're going to try to attack Binance. Hey, we have the right to use VPNs. If we don't want, if we want to invest in crypto, then we do it, right? It shouldn't be the United States government that decides what's good, and not good for us. I'm sorry, it shouldn't be. You can tell me, put your comments down below. You might think differently. Please add a comment. I'm willing to hear what you have to say. But getting back to hope. Some countries are going to pick it up. U.S. is going to reject it, and we're going to fall behind, and we're going to, we're going to regret this one day. Mark my words on this right now. I'm not alone in this either. Grow Bank. Grow Bank of Switzerland. Let's read this. Let's go into this article here. I want to read this. There's a whole bunch of articles out. I'm going to read one from, from the Bitcoinists right now, and you can read other articles. I'll put links down below so you can see it for yourself as well. Okay. Also, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure subscription's up to date. It's free. Give us a like button, please. Hit the bell so whenever time when video comes out, we do three or four or five a week. Um, that you, We try to stay up on current events as well as get you up to date on what are good cryptocurrencies to invest in right now, or maybe even companies to invest in. 
Um, we look at it would be crypto or even stocks. I'm not a big stock fan right now. Um, uh, gold and silver, those are other issues. So if you want to hear information on this, please subscribe, hit the bell, and let's j jump into this. While co cryptocurrencies gain mainstream adoption across sectors, and they do, cryptocurrencies gain mainstream adoption, especially over the last two years, and this is why the U.S. government has got to do something now to stop that in the U.S. So they can roll out what's known as a CBDC, a central bank digital currency, and that's there. The Fed now, you can go on the Fed, look it up, Federal Reserve, and you'll see they have a system called FedNow, and that is basically a digital payment platform. It's the first step. It's going to be gradual. We won't roll in all at one time. Everybody I talk to says, no, I want to accept that. I said, well, if you have to accept that, you will. And it's, well, if I have to, I guess I have no choice, you see. And that's where it's going to go, just like what took place with the recent illness. People had no choice. They want to travel. They want to go to work. They want to do things. They had to do things the government told them to do. And now we realize and know and maybe that wasn't such a wise thing to do. I'm going to jump down here a little bit on this. I'm just going to kind of jump down. And once you know my, my mouse went out. I want to jump down and just recap something here in the beginning. I don't quite agree with this, with the beginning of this article. But I will go into this. Let's jump into this. Okay, and then we'll get into what, what this bank does. A report noted that Coinbase CEO Brian Armstrong is considering adding banking features to the exchanges platform. And they're gonna be greatly restricted in the US. So that banking feature is gonna to have to go outside the US, which can run into the same problem that Binance has run into now with the in, in commodities issues are being sued. Um, so is, is the Binance CEO, they're being sued, trying to be brought back to the United States to stand trial, uh, saying that they basically promoted an illegal types of commodities in the US outside of, of the proper permission from the US government, which is, Look, they tried in this whole bank collapse thing with, with FTX and so forth. With FTX primarily, they tried to get Binance in there and wrap them up and pull them down. And Binance stepped out. They saw what was going on, stepped out, washed their hands of it. So the U.S. couldn't get them. They had to come up with something else. So they just went out and just threw out that they suspect them of all these different violations. Right? It's a crapshoot, what they're doing. It's just trying to shoot down all the main major platforms, Binance being the biggest. But it's outside the U.S., so really, the U.S. doesn't have jurisdiction. And this is what I'm tired of, is seeing this U.S. reaching arm, thinking that they're basically, you know, the, 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 the leader of the world, and that nobody else really has any say-so. And it's all about their interests or whoever's paying them, whatever country's in bed with them, their interests. And I'm sorry, but that's the truth. And that's exactly what I've seen in my experiences in government and as an executive in these foreign countries, dealing with U.S. as well. So he's gonna to have to go outside the US. Armstrong reveals, okay, and this is Brian Armstrong, the CEO of, of Coinbase. He revealed this via tweet while responding to a community member who suggested Coinbase add a neo banking service to bypass traditional banking. There is in our therein is our hope. So it's going digital, right? The report came after the SVB collapse, that's the bank, the, the, the Silicon Valley Bank, that circles USDC with 3.3 in, in reserve stock stuck in the Silicon Valley Bank. You see, the issue we have right now with these major cryptocurrency platforms is they have to use traditional banking, right? They have to keep money and back up the money, especially when you come to, to a stable coin like an USDC, right? You have to have that money backing it to become it's called stable. Now, a lot of this is in treasury bills, long-term treasury bills, that with inflation, when they start raising interest rates, they go down in value. So... It's really not good to invest in government debt. Dollar pig stable coins partly depend on traditional banking systems to store their reserves. So this is what I'm going to get to now, why this is hope for the crypto community. That while that why the Coinbase chief and other concerned crypto industry players seek alternatives to fractional reserve banking, that's the typical banking system, right? To avoid events like what happened with Silicon Valley and Signature Bank and, Silver, and Silvergate Bank's collapses from reoccurring. However, Grow Bank's model, and we're going to get into Grow Bank, appears to be a shift from the norm. Now, let's go jump back up here real quick to Grow Bank. What is their model? Grow Bank positions itself among the first to bring traditional banking and decentralized finance, DeFi, together. And we stand for that. So I'm gonna I'm gonna explain what this is then. I'm gonna I'm gonna actually bring it to you. This development would mark another milestone in linking traditional and decentralized finance. Okay, and we're talking about decentralized, we're talking about crypto 
blockchain is decentralized, not centralized. There's a lot of centralized. Ethereum, I'm sorry, argue what you want to. Ethereum is centralized. It's not decentralized. You can cry all you want to, but anything that's proof of staking is centralized. It's just centralized with a few people, right? So maybe it's not just one person, like apparently Binance is, but it's still centralized. And you can bring along a bunch of buddies and then put people in those places that hold those those nodes that are actually in line with your political view or your agenda or where you want to go with the currency. When you open it up to proof of work, I'm sorry, proof of work that generates all that electricity, all that power, that power decentralizes a blockchain and a cryptocurrency. That's the bottom line. And that's just in brief, I know, bottom line. Individual interests in fintech and the stock market have evolved in how people view banking products. The current financial system is changing people's focus from a traditional to a more decentralized banking method, especially what took place in Canada with the truckers that just take, took their Caesar bank accounts. If you support the truckers, you got your bank account seized as well, and many lost jobs because of it. The, so, Grow Bank's leverage, Grow Bank leveraged this, this whole fear of people, this inconsistency, I shouldn't say fear, that's what the government models on them. But basically, they've leveraged this opportunity of a need that needs to be fulfilled by the people to announce this hybrid program, offering neo-banking services that join crypto to fiat. According to Grow, it is an e-money, has an e-money and a classical banking license, EMI and FCA, while its users enjoy a cover under Swiss law. Now, I would not go as far as thinking, you know, Swiss law just makes me feel real good and cozy because Swiss law in the past has also just turned people over, right? Enough money, right politician, you know, Swiss, Swiss law has been inconsistent in the past. However, they may see a niche in a good income stream and they may support this banking system. Let's see how long it stands up. It's going to have to go under scrutiny of World Economic Forum and World Banks. You know, the U.S. can put pressure on because they want to eliminate that that bridge between crypto to fiat. Users can open corporate or personal deposit account using its mobile application. Now, watch this. This is basically online banking. They can also access a debit card and exchange currencies in fiat and crypto. Grow Bank is a model bank for managing funds, cryptocurrencies inclusive. Right. I'm just going to give a brief overview of basically how it works. And that's it. The grow charges a fee annually of 145 euros annually. So that's going to be around, give or take, 150, 160 dollars. Okay, and 12 euros monthly for personal or corporate cards. Okay, the bank issues grow token. So obviously, this is what it looks like to me. It's going to be something on blockchain, which users can buy and receive dividends on each paid transaction. Interesting. According to Grow's official website, the services are available to anyone, including customers in crypto unregulated countries at all times. You see, now, if you're going to have a regulated country like United States of America, you're not going to be able to get into that bank unless, of course, you use a VPN. But in today's news, I saw that this administration is suing Binance because they're encouraging people to use DPNs or VPNs to get around regulation of their countries. Well, you know what? That's all right. Doggone it. Or you could just leave, go to Puerto Rico, or you can just go to El Salvador, or go to countries where the laws are more pro-crypto. Unfortunately, in those same countries, you don't have the same rights for self-defense. So you can gain your wealth there, but maintaining your wealth there is going to be another question, right? So we just try to stay here in America and keep things good here and make it better and fight for it. This bank... Grow services of peers, the Grow Bank, okay? It may gain traction with the increasing demand for neo-banking services. And I see this demand coming. Grow services appear in the limelight that cryptocurrency community seeks alternatives to traditional banking after the demise of pro-crypto banks. That's such were Silicon Valley Bank, SVC, and others, right? The collapse of Silicon Valley Bank, Signature Bank, and Silvergate bankruptcy dished a notable blow to USDC, which is a stable coin. For a while, they've recovered, but could that happen again? Well, yes, it could, because their money's in the traditional banking system. They can just freeze their account. That could happen. Happen to us and our corporation as well. Sparking reaction among crypto enthusiasts. Okay. What I want to explain here is basically 
what I liked was how this this works, right? And it bases the Swiss bank startup as a platform of 64 fiat currencies and 20 cryptocurrencies as of right now to start out. So that's where they are. And your cryptocurrency is probably going to be your more common, your more blue chip cryptocurrencies, if you will, Bitcoin, Ethereum. And you're going to probably roll into Solana and you're going to run into Polkadot, et cetera. We're going to do another video, by the way, that talks about which of those would be the best ones to invest in. So please subscribe, hit the like button. So Grow Bank is basically a digital bank. But it's a, it's a service, it's a fee bank, which is different. So we'll pay them a fee annually and monthly for using the card. For if we have a card as well, right? Um, now, will they report us? Most likely they will if you're in a regulated country. Now, I don't know. They're talking about unregulated. We'll see what more comes out. I want to look more into this. And I'll keep you posted here in DeFi IoT. But all of a sudden, in the light of, hey, these banks collapse, other banks are popping up in jurisdictions, as we said they were, that are more favorable for free market economies and open more to decentralized finances. And right now, that's cryptocurrency. There might be something more coming down along, along the line, but I'm sorry. Where we defend our freedoms right now is in cryptocurrency. Gold and silver I like, but U.S. can pass a law like it did in the 1930s and say, hey, it's illegal. Now, if you have any gold and silver in your possessions, we're going to take it from you, and you're going to go to prison, or you're going to pay a fine too. So that could happen. If it's physical like that, they can take it from you. If you have cryptocurrency in your cold wallet, in a cold wallet, then, and that's with you, that's with you. Now, can they block platforms that let you, like Gala, for example, right now, Gala, you can't get your money out of Gala because of certain things U.S. attacked, and they, they had to, to, to take down an algorithm that once allowed you to move your money from Gala into your wallet, and now you can't take your money out of Gala. But Gala's promising to come up with a way to to compensate and these companies will if they want to stay in business because it needs our support and i'm a firm believer in that defi iot we'll see you in our next video <laughs>